Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with an ADSR first look video. Now, I should preface that this first look video isn't necessarily like a true first look in that these plugins aren't brand new. I just wanted to share them with you because they've... <laughs> I've been really excited about these ever since I found out about them. So these I'm going to be showing you and demoing two plugins by a company called New Sonic Arts, and they're not incredibly well known but they do make some really cool stuff. Now these two specific plugins, the reason I'm so excited about them is they fill a void in my personal arsenal of production oriented tools that I've been missing and that I'm kind of jealous of other DAW users because they have something like this. And that's easily chopping loops up and easily being able to drag and drop a simple sample, whether it's like a sub bass, a vocal chop or a synth chop and being able to play it. So I know some of you are going to be like, well, do I know and understand Logic? Yes, I do. I know that I could use the EXS24. I know that I could use the audio editor. I know I, that I could do detection on transients and all that. But then I have to map that to a sampler to get it to play. And yes, you can do it. Uh, I just have always kind of been jealous of Ableton Live's Simpler and Sampler, as well as the Sampler channel on FL Studio. So there are some DAWs out there that have very simple but yet effective samples, sa sampler or sample p playback engines that you can then play on a keyboard. You can play melodies. So for EDM, pop, hip hop, that's amazing. Now, I, I do know how to program in contact. Obviously, I've made a couple uh, contact libraries, but that's a little bit too in depth if I just want to throw in like a vocal chop and make sure it's in key and maybe time stretch it a little or play it at a different you know pitch or, or do something with it like an LFO type shape or anything like modulation of the pitch, I'd have to set up quite a bit in contact to do that. And it kind of kills the creative flow for me personally. So for all the guys out there who use Logic Pro X or another DAW that doesn't, you know, that's not enabled in live or FL Studio or one of the DAWs that have a simple but yet a highly effective loop slicing ability or sampler or sample playback ability where you can map it to a keyboard seamlessly, this tutorial course is going to be great for you. So Plugins are called Vice and Nuance. You're looking at Nuance right now, and this is a loop, loop slicer. And it is he obviously heavily patterned off of uh, like the GUI of Ableton, but I think it's much prettier and easier to look at. And it's really easy to use. And it has all the functions you'd want, none of the bloat of things like Contact or the EXS24. Now, the other plugin that we're going to be looking at in this video is called Nuance, made by uh, obviously the same company, and it looks like this. It is a really simple sample playback or sample player. Now you can drag and drop samples from your desktop, from anywhere on your computer, and just put them right on the screen, or you can load things up in your browser tab here, whatever you want to do. And you have really simple controls, and we'll cover those in a second. But let's go back to Vice real quick. Now, these both of these plugins come with a library, and I want to make this, I don't want to make this tutorial too long, so I'm going to go quick. And you get some uh, loops here. So if I double click, it'll load up a loop, or I can drag and drop a loop, and it'll detect the uh, the by default it'll detect the BPM of that loop. So you can see that changing over here. Uh, it's at 79.5 right now. We drag this one in. It's at 105, and you can have these different ways or formats of slicing. You can have it play the whole loop if you take away these flags or these transient markers up here. And if I hit a note now on the keyboard, right? Well, my tempo of my session right now is at 145. Let's see if that's playing with. It's not. So we have, uh, let's change the BPM over here. Okay, but it's already done its detection. So let's do grid one more time at 145. Okay, and let's take away some of the slices here. You can also hold down control on it and have them click much quicker. You just control click the transients to get them to go away. Now, so you can see that's actually going to be more on, on beat and on rhythm. Now, you can use that, or if you want more of a chop back or kind of like a loop chop player, you can do that as well. So let's load in. Um... All right, so let's try this one real quick. Right, that one might, mark, might, might work for what I want to do in this video. Okay, so let's uh, try this at 145 
beats per minute, and we are going to uh, let's redetect. We'll do we'll do grid at 145 beats per minute. I'm gonna take away some of these markers here, so I can try playing the whole loop in one pass and see how it works. Okay, so let's talk about some of the controls here. You have a start point, uh, you have an end point, you can have a choke, you have obviously the BPM, the beats. You have these really cool export features where you can export as a MIDI file. So let's do that, uh, let's do that now. And you have settings where you can export MIDI sequence, entire loop, or selected si cycles. So let's do, uh, let's do entire loop here. We're gonna import, export that. So let's, made you, let's see, you made some really cool chops. There it is at 145, uh, or almost, it's pretty close to where it should be. Actually, that one seems to be at 90 there. Let's shorten that up a little. So yeah, you can export whole loops, which is really, really cool. You can export MIDI. So let's go to the settings, and we will do, uh, click on this. We'll do MIDI sequence, and we'll export that. And let's hit no on import tempo and it will pull up a MIDI region. And this MIDI region is just gonna be a really annoying piano. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use that piano to take it back up to, to uh, Vice. And what we're gonna do is kind of play our own chop. Now, with any type of looper or slice sample loop type plugin like this, you can obviously time stretch and have it play to your new grid, or you can play it manually at the original. So let's drag this in. This was Vice 0901. So we're going to take that here, drag and drop that in. Okay, so that's going to reset the BPM to 90 beats per minute. So now if we play this MIDI region that we just exported. All right, well, let's delete that for now. And I have another instance of Vice here, and it's just a hi-hat loop. Now, if I play the entire hi-hat loop or part of it here, if we delete some of these by control clicking or right clicking and uh, play this little loop here, it's the hi-hat loop that I made at uh, 160 beats per minute. Well, the cool thing about a sample chop or a sam like this type of a sampler, sample playback player where you, can, where you can chop up whole loops really easily, drag and drop, there's just one hi-hat. There's a little bit of a roll. So what I can do is I can just play this and use it as an instrument by using full loops. So what we're going to be doing in this video, we're actually going to be using Vice and Nuance to make like a little trap progression. I already have an instance of Sub-0808 playing a little sub bass section. Okay, so we have the hi-hats right here, and we might add in that chop loop later. But let's start to look at Nuance now. Oh wait, last thing I want to talk about with Vice is that you can actually rescale the GUI, which is really cool. You can go to uh, Setup, you can make it large, compact, medium, large, extra large. So if you really want to get in chop, get in and chop stuff, you can, which is really nice. So I'll leave it on large for now. All right, let's go to uh, Nuance now. Talk about Nuance. Nuance is a really cool plugin. So what I did was I loaded a brass sample in, and you just literally drag and drop this in, like like that and it will load up and then what I did was I played a little riff just dinked around with it okay so let's listen to this right and that's what I love about nuance and vice is that's just simple to use I, I got to create without having to set up anything just drag and drop so we're going to do Nuance one more time, and we're going to start to talk about the controls. So Nuance will come with a factory library, and the factory library is quite limited, but we'll look at it real quick. We'll load up Pop Synth, and here's what it sounds like. Right, and you can load up drum kits, and the drum kits will be reminiscent of kind of like a drum rack in live, or just a really simple drum sample playback player. And you can drag and drop samples in from your desktop, or you can use any of, obviously, the library. And I and a New Sonic Arts, they have made some Essential Drums, Volume 1 and 2. And some of the kits are really cool. I wasn't super stoked on the acoustic kits. Uh, they were kind of in between like, real acoustic and, and fake acoustic. But they'd work really well for pop and certain genres of EDM. Okay. 
and but some of the destructive kits were really cool. Were really, really, really cool, actually. So the the, the uh, destructive kits, there's some really cool R and B kits. The spaceship kits were interesting as well. Like that'd be this type of stuff would be really cool for fills. And the really cool thing about it is it's laid out just like machines. So if you're a machine user, you'll be used to this idea of kick, snare, hat, hat, kick, clap, or new other snare, hat, and then the perk. And I really like some of the percussion in it as well. So you can load up Essential Drums Volume 2. There's electro kits. There's 16 pads per drum kit. And then you can even load things up by uh, samples as well. So you can just click on samples and search for one shots. You can search for uh, drums as well. If you're just looking for a snare, you can double click. So the browser is really slick, slick and it's really easy to use. But we're going to drag and drop our own samples into it. So I have a kick here that I want to use for this demo. OK, let's turn it back up. Okay, and I have a snare that is incredible that I'm going to pop in as well. All right, so there is our sound right now. Okay, so let's actually play this with our Sub-Zero 808 patch and the horns coming from Nuance. All right, so I recorded that in real quick off camera just so you guys didn't have to hear me playing through that, but literally just played something real simple like... that simple so here are our drums from nuance and we will color this let's make it uh, deep blue the color that I usually make my drums the bass I usually make red so we'll color this that's the sub bass and then I don't know why I keep closing out the colors you think I'd think that through and then here is our uh, our synth All right, let's go back to those hi-hats. I'm going to record those in real quick. All right, so let's try quantizing that. We'll do, uh, let's just do 16, though, keep it simple. All right, so we have a really basic progression, but it's really easy to use. This came together in less than 10 minutes. And the thing I like about using uh, chopped loops here for hi-hats is you can do this. You can copy and paste this, and we can pan this one out left, pan this one out right. And because it's coming from a loop, there'll be different trigger points and different samples. I'm just going to change the notes at which these occur on. It'll be the same timing, but if we play these, right, some of them are going to be different, which will help the stereo image. All right, so that's enough playing around in it. As you guys can see, I actually have a lot of fun with these plugins. You guys should definitely check them out. It might be on, on the more expensive side for this type of stuff, but if you are like me and you're struggling with a DAW that doesn't have these types of like loop slicers and uh, sample sample manipulation tools, sample playing tools, you got to check these out. So the uh, controls here, you have M amp envelope. You can change the attack of anything, so we can turn that on by, by doing this. So here's our brass sample. Okay, I can turn that off. Right, uh, we can then reverse this, which is kind of cool. If I play a note, that's pretty cool. Uh, you have a pitch control. We can turn on glide here. Let's unreverse this. So let's glide on that last note, and we let's add an effect here on this. Why not? Let's do a shaper. You can really easily turn off the effects. Let's do uh, 
Let's try, let's do sample rate. All right, we can even throw in, we can add a source here so we can turn these samples, these sample, or the sample effects off here. And by hitting that little power switch, we can add a modulation source. Let's do uh, LFO2, so we'll go to LFO2. Change the shape to something a little bit weird, change the phase a little, maybe change the, the uh, speed. And we'll go sync, we'll do, we'll want this synced here. And let's do, uh, let's do amp, just to see what that sounds like. So we had the amp turned off for that, so that probably wasn't the greatest idea, but let's do, uh, let's actually turn on the effects here and we'll do Shaper Drive. Let's try that. So it makes kind of that like shaky shimmery effect at the end, I like that. But there's modulation, so like I said, these are really cool tools. You do a lot of cool stuff with them. Uh, there's more to the interface I didn't touch on, but I didn't want this to be a whole tutorial on it because it's already getting quite long. But yeah, guys, Vice and Nuance by New Sonic Arts. Check them out. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.